Alright YouTube, I figured I'd show you guys my Grizzly Geo 462 lathe modifications. Uh, well first just a little bit about myself. I'm 17 years old. My name is Alex. I live in uh, Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Amish country. And this is uh, my grandpa's lathe. This is actually his whole shop really. I did have quite a bit of work in it myself though, so it's kind of our shop, I guess you could say. So, I'm sure some of you have may have seen this lathe before, or read about it, or seen it somewhere, maybe. But, uh, it's kind of a crappy lathe. It uses a Reeves drive with this lever here. It It's mechanically uh, variable speed. So by pushing that lever forward, you would there's a pulley inside, and when you pull this lever this way, it gets smaller. It, it widens out so the pulley falls down in, increasing the speed to the spindle. And of course, when you would push it the other direction, it would get it would close, getting bigger, which would slow the lathe down. And I have the old parts. This is the old motor. You can see this is where it mounted to the lathe and you can see this pulley. This one just has a spring on it so it goes in and out to match the one that you change inside. You can see here's some of the parts. I, I left everything intact in case the treadmill motor somehow breaks so we need to sell it. But you can see it would uh, be inside the lathe like this and it would come apart. This big black metal piece would be connected to a rod at the bottom there through a through a hole there and that would pull that piece which is attached to this right pulley it would pull that and you can see that diameter in the middle there gets smaller. And of course the other way you would rotate the handle would push it together forcing the belt to the outside and making it slower. Now, problems with this type of drive is that it's noisy, which really isn't that much of a problem for me, but it also tends to uh, chew up belts. Since the pulleys are moving and constantly pushing on the belt, and it really shreds them up pretty quick. They only last a couple months, maybe a year. Uh, it also stretches them out a little bit, so you start at low speed with 600 RPMs, and as you, the more you use it, the more it stretches, so your slower speed gets a little bit faster, like it'll be 650, 670. Um, the fastest speed for the lathe was around 24, 2500 RPMs, which is really slow, or, well, it's still pretty slow for a fast RPM rating. Uh, 600 RPMs was too fast for anything, for anything really like this. This bowl's about 7, 8 inches in diameter rough turn that the other last night on it with the lathe. Show you the inside of it. Kind of just built this cover here. Since the uh, motor, the way I put it on, didn't really work, you can see this whole thing. This is the treadmill readout. It has all the controls and, well, most of the circuitry inside. And then there's wires here that run along the back. Those are other cords, but this, this one goes all the way down through. And here's the motor. The case is just made out of underlayment and some yellow pine. There's just a base right here, which is held together with pocket screws, and that's just bolted to the lathe head right here. There's holes in it that were tapped for the bolts that hold the motor on over there. And I just reused those bolts that came with it. Needs a little tension there. Now uh, you can see. There's the other circuit board. You can see the light. I don't know if you can see the little red light in there. There's <coughs> other bits and pieces there for the wiring and all that jazz. It's a 2 horsepower DC electric motor. Its uh, highest speed is 6,100 RPMs. Apparently it's made in Utah. I don't know if you can focus here. It's, it's at the bottom there. But 
it's it's a nice motor. It's not a you know a cheap one, I guess you could say. Although it was very inexpensive to purchase the treadmill that it came from, it was only five bucks at a local auction up the street, even. So bought a whole working treadmill for five dollars. It was a very hot day in in June here in Pennsylvania, and most people had left, and the people that were still left didn't really want a treadmill. So I got it for five bucks. That's all it cost to do this, just five dollars. The belt my grandpa had, didn't have to buy another one. See, I made a hand wheel. This lathe sucks so much it doesn't come with one, of course. Uh, the RPM readout was pretty easy to wire into the system. Just uh, the wires that come from the power cord, those get uh, twisted together with the wires in the RPM readout and the wires in the control board in the motor. They just, all three of those get wired together <coughs> and it works just fine. So, I'll spin this around here a little bit. Loosen that up and then turn it. Turn it 90 degrees for you. <coughs> Lock it down. See so you can see it there. Well, I guess I'll turn it on here and show you. With this. This is the cord here from the uh, safety uh, clip. So when you pull this out, it keeps it from working. It's a lockout. Uh, there's a micro switch in there, I believe, that when you pu push this in, it, it uh, turns it on, I guess. Uh, but just to turn it on, you just pull the slider up, and you can see it'll really turn very slow. When you just push it a little bit. See, we're going 70 RPMs, 80, 70, 80 RPMs, somewhere in, in between 70 and 80. So that's really slow. Uh, that's if you want to put like a finish on something or maybe sand something like this. <coughs> you can speed it up even further. That's, that's kind of like a good rough out speed, maybe a little faster for something this size. Uh, See, it is shaking the lathe slightly. I don't know if you can see that. But that's because it's a wing bowl, you know, it's from a log. It's not super balanced even when you have it all turned. But you can speed it up even more. Right about, I think maybe... Once I got this bowl round, this is about where I was turning it. At this speed, once it was pretty round, it was pretty balanced. So it'll, it'll go pretty fast. It'll go pretty fast. I think uh, with this... I turned two pulleys in the back here, these wooden ones out of plywood. They have two steps on them. You can see... See them in there. They have two speed ranges. The fast speed is very fast. Uh, when you just move the slider up a little bit, it goes to like a thousand RPMs like like that, so. But that's the lathe in general, I guess, the modifications. It's really easy to do. Um, it took probably, oh, I'd have to say, maybe five or six days off and on type thing. Uh, I got the treadmill apart on a Thursday and I had it on the lathe on the Saturday, all mounted up. And then this weekend I had worked on making the pulleys, and that was a lot of work making them. I wanted to make them strong enough, so I made them out of Baltic birch plywood. It had a lot of plies in it, so it's very strong. But, <coughs> I guess just some other thoughts on the lathe. Uh, it's a decent beginner lathe, I guess. It really, it, it'll swing 16 inches. And with the stock motor, you know, it really was too fast uh, for something that big. Even something this big, it would be shaking and rattling and rolling at 600 RPM rough out speed. So, with this, with the treadmill motor, it, it makes it a lot better. Uh, the tool rest isn't very great. Uh, it gets nicked kind of easy, so you got to file it every once in a while. And the banjo... It does lock down. It is snug, I guess, but there's a bolt under here, or a nut, that uh, adjusts the clamping pressure, and it comes loose a lot. 
it would be really annoying when you're in the middle of a bowl and you constantly have to kind of do this awkward reach under thing and do it. They don't have uh, lock nuts on them, you know, with the rubber to keep them from coming loose from the vibrations. So, you know, two pennies more maybe would have solved that problem. Also, this extension here, you really have to have that in. Uh, this hole here isn't very deep, so when you put the uh, actual tool rest itself in there, it doesn't uh, sit high enough. It sits pretty low. It's okay for bowls, but if you want to do like skew cutting or spindle turning, it isn't very good for that. I'll put this back in there. So this this thing in here flexes a lot if you get a catch or you're taking a really heavy cut or something out of balance. So you got to be careful. This is just cast iron, so it can snap if there's stresses or cracks in it, you know. Uh, the lathe isn't very heavy. I think it's a little bit over, it's a little bit under 200 pounds, or 300 pounds. I think it's around 280-something. <coughs> but the other thing here is that this tailstock, it doesn't lock down. It locks down okay. It does slide a little bit when you do apply pressure on it. The hand wheel doesn't turn all that nice. Uh, one of the things that's really annoying is that it doesn't have a self-ejecting tailstock. So you got to wind this back, and you got to use the knockout tool and pound that out, and that, that's kind of annoying. And it isn't very. Uh, the point here on the end aligns with the uh, headstock uh, drive spur. I think it's like an eighth of an inch off. I could align it with some shims, but for making bowls, it's okay. It's just, turning pens is a real problem, though, when you have to do that. So this lathe is not very good for small, very accurate uh, returnings. But that's the lathe, I guess. Uh, cut off this video before it gets too long. Have any questions? Uh, be more than happy to answer them.